Aloha. In this segment, we are going to look at a wonderful piece called Kamanu, which was composed by Auntie Alice Namakelua. First, I'll play the piece, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. It's in the G Wahine tuning, so it's like the tarot patch open G tuning with a third string down to an F sharp. So our notes are D, G, D, F sharp, B, and D. So to put uh, your first finger on the first fret of the third string, that helps you to make the G chord. So in this tuning, a wahine tuning, it has an F sharp that resolves to G. To make a D7 chord, you just move your first finger to the first fret of the second string, just that one note, and you play the top four strings, and you can also add to that the sixth string and the bass. So you notice the whole song stays right in this first position. We're always going to be using our uh, first finger on the first fret. We'll use our second finger on the second fret and third finger on the third fret. So it just covers a span of three frets. Uh, really wonderful piece and sometimes this is called anti Alice slack key. <laughs> Okay, I just played the first theme of the song, and what Auntie Alice would do is she would sing over that accompaniment. And she, she wrote many beautiful songs, a very important uh, teacher of guitar and hula. She composed wonderful songs for uh, things like the Maui uh, Lady Parade. She wrote the song Haleakala Hula. She wrote a beautiful song called Nani. She co-wrote Hey Haba Iao with Peter Moon. Uh, and this song, Kamanu, she would sing actually many songs over this accompaniment. Also, Noho Pai Pai, she would do the same exact accompaniment and sing the song Noho Pai Pai over it. And when she would do the vocals, there would actually be an extra tag that would add, be added on to the uh, form of the song. But I play the instrumental version, it works well, and with a five bar cycle. And this actually, this song cycle later was adapted and songs like Punahele and the Weeha Swing use this exact same uh, progression that, that goes by. So the chord progression is, it starts on G for two bars, D7, then two beats of D7 back to G. Then the vamp is just D7 to G. See, I can do that with just one finger for G, three, four. I'll just try them once per measure. Three, D7, top four strings, then two counts of D7, one, two, back to G, four again. That's the form, it's a very short cycle. G, D7, D7, back to G, then D7, back to G. Last time. And then we do a harmonic at uh, the 12th fret. To play a harmonic, you lay your finger, I'm using my third finger, and I flatten the finger, and don't press down to the notes, but barely touch right over the 12th fret, directly over the fret wire. And then I use index and middle to play the two top strings. And you get what's called a chime, or a harmonic. So that's used uh, many times at the ends of songs. So that the ending of the song goes... So let's look at some of the techniques that are used to play this song. Uh, we're starting with our thumb on the fifth string open and fourth string open. Second finger at the left hand plays the second fret, still with your thumb. Then you use your index to do a hammer on. And this is a very important phrase that we're going to use again and again in the song. 
to play the third string open with index finger and then your index finger the left hand hammers on the note and try to start from directly above the note and come directly down on it instead of at an angle right on top right next to the fret wire see if you can practice just that and get a nice tone and let the the hammer on note ring get lots of sustain then you do a, the fifth string and do the hammer on again then use your middle finger to play the second string then your thumb plays the fourth string that's the first measure second measure is exactly the same repeat that so let's practice that together fifth string open fourth string second fret hammer on then fifth string hammer on again middle finger second string open thumb on the fourth string very slowly one and two and a three and a four and repeat one and two and a three and a four and so those are the first two bars of the piece then it changes in bar three to a D7 chord, and here's the phrase. So it lets the bass note ring for the whole measure. Then you do a pull off. You play the second fret of the high string, pull directly down with your finger towards the floor, moving in towards the back of your hand. And it doesn't take much effort at all to make a really strong sounding pull off. Imagine that it's just the opposite direction of your right hand plane. You're using the back knuckle and sweeping your fingers towards the back of your palm. Same thing can happen with a pull-off with your left hand. It's just doing that motion turned around. Once again, get right next to the fret wire and pull down. Practice that. Just play the second fret. Just one note with your index finger, then release the note. You want to try to control the amount of pressure so that you don't play the string too hard or soft where you can't really hear the note. So really a nice clean sound. So you're going to play the sixth string in the bass, then first finger plays on the second string first fret, third finger plays on the third string third fret. This is a little bit of a stretch so you can practice making that feel comfortable. If you can put your fingers down a span of four frets in first position, one, two, three, four. We're just shifting the third finger down one string and using first and uh, third finger to do that. So the, this sounds like this. Then you release the third finger, open. Then fourth string with your thumb. Then third string played with index or middle. And then thumb on the fourth string. So let's look at the third measure. One and two and three and four and again very slowly. So that measure will take a, quite a bit of practice, and before you move on to each new part of the piece, put in the effort to really get each measure very clear and clean. This is a great exercise for doing a pull-off and then landing on these two notes. I like to let them ring together so you really hear the chord. Lots of sustain. It's a really beautiful phrase. And then the next uh, bar which uh, also repeats, this is basically what the tag phrase is, or the vamp, and it goes, same pull off with the sixth string in the bass, first finger, but then now we do the hammer on, like we did in the first bar. And it ends with the second half of the first bar. So it doesn't take much to learn all of the different components of, of this song. So here's four, bar four again. Thumb in your right hand, then middle and second finger, middle finger in the right hand, and second finger in the left. Do the pull off, go to index, and then you use your index again in the right hand on the third string to do the hammer on, then play the fifth string, hammer on, index, then middle on the second, and then thumb. So that phrase, bar four. Bar five is exactly the same. Now what I want you to do is go and 
and listen to Auntie Alice's recordings. There are many wonderful videos of her on YouTube. She released an album on Hula Records that was just beautiful. She was born in the late 1800s and lived all the way into the 1980s. And she had a very long and prolific career. She was such a, a just an incredible kumu to, to so many people in so many ways. And one of the wonderful wahine uh, kihualo players. So it's really worth looking at her style and her technique and her spirit. It can really come out in the music you play. And listen for variations. I won't introduce any variations at the moment. We'll get into more on uh, further segments. But I just want you to play very pure and simple exactly how she played it on the recording of Kamanu. Repeat that. The D7 phrase. Then the tag. That repeats. Again, try to really work on your timing so you can keep it nice and consistent as you play. So have fun with this piece and have fun exploring the G Wahine tuning. It's a wonderful tuning. And as I mentioned before, there are variations of this song that Ray Kane did, Punahele. He wrote a beautiful piece on this exact same chord progression with the similar sorts of hammer-ons and pull-offs, but it goes up and down the neck and does many other things. We'll look at that piece at another time. And also the Weha Swing from Sunny Chillingworth is one of the fantastic really amazing virtuosic pieces in this tuning. We'll explore that uh, song later as well. So have fun playing Kamanu, and I'll see you very soon. Ahoy ho!